There are over 70,000 female escorts working in Britain today. Some people think that being an escort is exploiting yourself, but the reality is people doing a zero-hour contract is exploitation. They're selling sexual services to over two million men. I think you might like my outfit. <laughs> From students to single mums, they're all selling sex on the side. Boobs more to me. Beautiful. He's a big fan of Star Wars. I've never seen my man so happy. Now the world's oldest profession is digital, and it's never been easier to get started in this billion-pound business. <laughs> I have a booking. But why do some women choose to sell their bodies? The problem with my generation is we just don't know how to date. And is it worth it? Being an escort is like being in jail. The money's really good, but the loneliness is dead sad. There's always that worry that you're going to get addicted to the world of escorting. It is hard. It's either love or money. Then I guess I choose money. It's happening, it's happening, it's happening. Twenty-two-year-old Alexis recently decided to become an escort. I haven't had an escort experience yet, but I just want to get all my fears out the way, just want to see what it's like and just have that first time to just properly just experience it. <laughs> Last week, Alexis contacted Cardiff's biggest escort agency to arrange a meeting. She has told no one in her life what she's about to do but she's agreed to let a film crew capture her journey. I want a double life. I want to have fun. I want to have more excitement. I'm tired of just like having one night stands. I just want a new experience for myself. Today, she's come to see the agency's manager, Lawrence, to go over the final details before her first ever escort experience. Yes, sweetheart. <laughs> That's Stitch the company dog. <laughs> <laughs> In the UK, selling sex as an independent escort is perfectly legal, but escort agencies have to operate within strict guidelines. From our perspective, we're selling time and companionship. Anything that takes place inside the booking is mutually consented between you and the client. What we're offering is a kind of girlfriend experience, if you like. <laughs> we say that we celebrate intimacy, and they're paying a lot of money for your company. Alexis will be charging £150 an hour, of which Lawrence will get a 30% cut for promoting her and taking bookings. How much would you like to earn a week? Um, £1,000. £1,000 a, £1, yeah. a week, yeah. OK? We could certainly help you to achieve that. When I meet the guys, at what point do I ask for money? <laughs> ah, always at the beginning. That's a golden rule. Now, when you get the money, always count it and then put the money somewhere safe. All right? You feel clear about that? Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. Is it all right if I wore a dress in heels or is that too much for bookings? Expensive is good. Classy is good. You've got quite a unique look. You know, we'll present you as kind of ebony princess. <laughs> we'll probably market you on your profile, be, be among the first to meet Alexis, <laughs> we'll get in touch with you as we get bookings. I think you're going to be very popular. OK. Yeah. As part of her induction, she also gets to meet Penny, an experienced escort, to find out what really goes on with clients behind closed doors. I'm feeling extremely scared about my first time. Only because even though I know the client's booking me, they've paid for me, they want me, like, i meant to be in that room, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Do I walk in the room and do I, like, say hi? Do I, like, pull down his pants? Like, <laughs> that's just what I'm scared of. When you have sex with guys, what is it like? Is it rough, smooth, like...? There's no, like, you know, rough sex or anything that makes you feel uncomfortable. It's just normal sex. It's just normal sex, trust me, it's just, like, having sex with your boyfriend or girlfriend, but who you don't know before. Is it condom always, or some regulars, you go, I know you, it's fine? No, no, you have to use protection, like, every single time, no matter how much they offer you. What's the highest price, if you've been offered, to no. go without a condom? Like, um, how much is the highest? Yeah, there will be, like, a, a dozen pounds without condom, but I will never do it. I will not risk my own life to to do it. It's not worth it. So, like, why are you here? Like, there must be a reason you're doing this. Well, I just think um, 
I don't have a boyfriend, I'm single. So um, instead of doing the, um, instead of using Tinder like to find other guys, why not doing this? Like you can make money. That is actually so true. Like part of the reason I'm doing it actually is because like, you know, when you go on a date with a guy from Tinder. I know. Yeah. And it's like. They pretend they want to be in a relationship with you, and it's like, and then they get your hopes up as well. Exactly. And you end up feeling like this may be it, it and then it just turns out to and be you, sex. And you put in so much effort. <laughs> to be honest, like, it's not for free anymore. <laughs> it's not for free anymore. Alexis has just gone live on the agency's website. She's available to meet men from tomorrow. <laughs> um, that was. Perfect. I wasn't, I wasn't as nerve-wracking as I thought it would be, and most of my questions got answered, so brilliant. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to it now. While Alexis is just starting out, in London, Cassandra has been a high-end escort for five years. My name is Cassandra Carrera. I'm an independent London escort with indefinable quality. I have passion for art and find intellectual conversations a real turn on. Typically, she sees one client a day and charges £500 an hour. I do not look for quantity, but a few quality gentlemen who perhaps would prefer a regular possible meet with a lady he can trust. What happens between us stays totally discreet and private. Originally from Russia, 28-year-old Cassandra specializes in fantasy and role play for wealthy older men. This room is partly, it's beautiful. I made it all myself. I have disco ball. The whole idea is to create the full fantasy. This is my treasure. These are all my costumes. Cassandra offers each man a bespoke escort experience. Last time I was playing Dracula's wife, so here is everything that needed to be a proper vampire. And actually it's quite sexy as well. So this is my stewardess outfit. As I used to work as a stewardess, I know all the safety procedures and sometimes I'm, I can just um, be extra realistic. I was just saying that, well, place your life jacket over your head and there is whistle and the light. I, at some moment, I, I really believe that we are in the airplane and everything is going on, for real. You know, it was so intense and passionate and, yeah. Like in real life. <laughs> there is one gentleman, he was a sheikh, uh, and I was his uh, Egyptian exotic dancer. So it was something like quite revealing outfit, I need to admit. Uh, and very, uh, what I love about it is this thing, which I found attractive and I'm thinking that it suits me quite so I kind of was dancing and pretending that we are in this in his harem and I'm trying to seduce him and make him feel really special and he is special he's a special man so he deserves a special service for sure <laughs> Cassandra often gets flown around the world by her clients, but today she's working from home. Um, my first time as an escort, I, I remember this client he, um, who was a Chinese and um, we went to the same university. However, he, um, we didn't have sex because he came too soon. Um, before he even entered me. <laughs> In Plymouth, 29-year-old Hannah has recently set up her own agency. As an escort herself, she's had her fair share of short bookings. They generally do come quite quick, and they do because they can't help it. They're so excited with someone that they don't know. It's all, all over within under a minute, normally. With, 90% of men, they're so excited and they actually tell you beforehand, like, oh, please, like, try and, like, don't be fast or, like, you know, let's not do doggy style because, you know, I don't think I'll handle it. Hannah started escorting in her early 20s and dealt with all kinds of requests. 
the amount of guys that booked me because I looked like a child is actually quite unbelievable because I had very petite small boobs and virtually non-existent boobs to be honest like an A cup and I had many people try and ask me to dress as a schoolgirl and imitate to be a child and I wouldn't do it and it was a big wake up call for me um, that people normal people think like that Hannah's agency specialises in dinner dates with an emphasis on companionship. To be a high-class escort, you really do need to be well-spoken, uh, reasonably well-educated, well-dressed, smart, clean. It's about sophistication. Uh, it's about company. It's about being a nice person. Escorting can be a risky business. A national survey reported that almost half of sex workers have experienced violence. So Hannah screens all potential clients. This one here is an actual serious um, warning of a dangerous client that I've actually seen before, who's a paranoid schizophrenic. We know exactly who he is and all of his false names, that he bribes them about their families and tries to rob them, basically. He tried to do it with me, but I'd, I'd only just started out in Plymouth at the time. I didn't have any money for him, so I'm quite a strong person, I was like, by now <laughs> but then there's other people who have definitely been fooled by him so we're on you know on red alert because he could use any phone we already got a few of his numbers he's tried and used and he has tried this year to apply for our agency and we'll never send a girl out to him a lot of people give fake names but we explain that we need your real name otherwise no one will be coming In Cardiff, 22-year-old Alexis has just signed up to an escort agency. She's still waiting to meet her very first client. I think the one thing that would put me off escorting, I don't know if maybe stop, but put me off, is if someone hit me or, yeah, just fight was violent towards me. And seriously, actually, I could probably swing them back, so... Um, you know, uh, because that's kind of a weird, because I know I can look after myself. If I know if a man's on top of me, I could probably fight back. Only a day after her profile went online, Alexis is already proving popular with clients wanting to book her. But she's had to turn them down. Last night, I got my period. So, unfortunately, for the next five days, I won't be able to work, which is really disappointing, because... I was looking forward to it, and yeah, so periods and escorting don't mix. Before this, I was just living for other people and doing what I thought I had to do for other people and to have this image and convey this person, and it's, yeah, I feel like escorting is going to be the way that I scrap this idea of myself that I've made based on other people's ex expectations and start making my own person from my own expectations and my own <laughs> fancies and what I want to be. No one else's input, just me. One of the strangest things I've been asked, and I was very intrigued, I was, is to pop balloons that are full of water with my bare feet. Well, I got this call from a client and I went to his house and we were making out and his wife showed up. Kind of strange. I was up for it. I was. I would definitely do it. £150 an hour, bare feet, popping balloons. Why not? His wife said, oh, it's fine, it's fine. We can do it together. I was so shocked. In Manchester, busy escort Kat is about to see her first client of the day. Hi, how are you? Well, welcome to my place. Well, it's not my place, I just work from here. This is my, like, apartment, where I do my work from. Um, I've got a job in about 20 minutes time, but I'll give you a quick job up before I go and get ready for my job. This is my bedroom where I get ready and sleep out. So I've got all my stuff, my little dolls and stuff. This is why I get cosy when I go to bed. What I'm going to do now is light the candles and then shut my curtains and stuff. He wants girlfriend experience, so girlfriend experience is like K 
kissing and cuddling, plunge their experiences when they want more naughty stuff. But it's good when they want girlfriend experience because they get cuddled. <laughs> then I've got my outfits here. Because you want girlfriend experience, I might, um, I'm just going to wear red. It seems more romantic <laughs> and he doesn't want this strap on. <laughs> Some guys actually like this stuff. Sorry, I know it's dirty but because it's been in my bag and needs washing because of the, the thing. But some guys like this. Up them. Make sure the blinds are shut. Like many escorts, Kat works independently, advertising online and managing her own bookings. Well, I'm just texting the client now just to see how far away he is. And hopefully she'll be here in about 10 minutes. Kat charges £120 an hour and sees about 25 clients a week. With no agency to pay, she keeps all her money. I open the door and I say, Hi, it's Kat, how are you? Nice to meet you. Um, then I say, do you want a shower, do you want a drink or anything? And then I say, oh, can we get the business out of the way first? Because some guys, like, um, if they don't pay you first, then they say, oh, like, they're, they're not going to pay us. See you in a minute. That's my client. I'm just giving my directions to get in. So, I think you might like my outfit. <laughs> Fifteen minutes later, and the client's finished. Um, he was all right. He just wanted kisses and cuddles, so it was a bit, like, weird. And he was... I've actually seen him before, but until he told me his occupation, I couldn't remember him. Because obviously I see that many guys. Um, but he was all right. <laughs> but there's no time to waste, as the next one's due soon. This is why, you know what I did? I've hid some of my cupboard, <laughs> so, can't, so they can't use all the towels. Some guys just think, oh yeah, I'll just use them all, but they don't think that you've got clients afterwards. I've got the mints and stuff, but... Got for the clients. Hannah has seen a recent increase in the number of young women applying to join her agency. I can't imagine any girl out there could say that they wouldn't enjoy being paid, let's just say, a dinner date rate of £350, as well as having the whole dinner paid for, your champagne, your everything, and then being able to afford to go shopping the next day and spending your money on luxury items. Today, Hannah has arranged a photo shoot for her latest recruit, 23-year-old Jasmine. The most important thing about being an escort is your photos, because men don't tend to read the dialogue they just look at the photos and then they get the number and then they call it. And if those photos look great, then that guy's gonna fantasize over you. And when he meets you, those fantasies become real. Single mum Jasmine has only been escorting for two months and still has a full-time job, but she's already enjoying the economic benefits. I was working two jobs, um, running myself into the ground on practically minimum wage just to try and, you know, get everything paid, have a life as well <clears throat> for me and my family. And, yeah, I got into this and it's given me that freedom to be able to sleep in on a Sunday and spend time with my family and have that freedom and the choice not to have to work all the time. Jasmine, I would say, is perfect as a high-class escort. I really would. She's had amazing reviews and, yeah, people love her. Look a little more relaxed. Jasmine's first time is still fresh in her mind and was an eye-opening experience for her. When you're meeting a client, you, when you first see them, you, as any date, any first date, you get the butterflies, you get the build-up, you get, is my hair going to be OK? My makeup going to be OK? I didn't know what type of man that I was going to see, um, but when I got there, I was very surprised to know that he was just a gent, a, a real gent, who wanted to show me how to have a good time and what nice wine tasted like, which is very nice. <laughs> 
guys don't want to meet girls um, just for that moment. You know, they want to meet someone and feel that it's real. They want to put the money on the table in an envelope and push it to one side and pretend that that money exchange never happened. And it's convenient. The guy gets what he wants out of the girl. There's no arguing. There's no, oh, have you done the washing up, darling? It's what everyone kind of dreams of, in a way, um, of it's, it's a perfect partnership. It's satisfying for me to go home knowing that I've had a cuddle with someone, I've had dinner with someone, I've talked about my day to someone, which is, is nice. Um, but I'm not having to sleep in the same bed as them. I'm not having to make them lunch for work. <laughs> Just an all-round good, good time for me as well. Many escorts keep their profession a secret from friends and family, but Jasmine decided to be open with hers from the beginning. My family were very shocked at first. They stereotyped me to be like, like anyone else would kind of judge me. Um, but as time went ahead, they kind of got used to the idea and I kind of showed them how things work. I lost some friends um, due to jealousy, but you lose people on the way through life all the time. And if I can't be, if I'm gonna be judged by my own friends on my journey, then they need to leave. Now I'm off to my first client of the day, um, so I'm going to shoot off, get ready, and then get to him. In Cardiff, 22-year-old Alexis is anxiously awaiting confirmation of her very first booking as an escort. I'm between nervous and impatient. I just want to see the client already, but then I don't want to see the client already. I like it. <laughs> I like the whole delay to it, but oh, I just really want to get it over and done with now. <laughs> Before, if you had told me this five years ago, you're going to be selling yourself, I would have sat there and been like, oh my God, how am I going to feel after? I'm stressed out. But now, because I've slept with so many guys and it's all been crap and I felt shit, I'm just there like, I want to do it for money. And I, ooh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, just two seconds. <laughs> um, so I have a booking at 9.30. He's a regular and that's all, that's all I've been told so far, so. <laughs> First-time escort Alexis is on her way to meet her first ever client. I'm just feeling really nervous. Like I know I don't look it or like, but it's just I don't know what I'm. I know what I'm getting myself into right now, but I don't really know what I'm getting myself into. Like I'm just nervous that it's not going to be what I expected it to be. Yeah, that's it. I'm just nervous that all these ideas I had might actually not be the case. So yeah, it's just seeing what, it, just finally experiencing it. <clears throat> I don't know what I'm thinking. My mind's just a bit of a blank right now with just, all I know is that it's happening. Like, I just feel like I've left my body and I'm just, watching all this unfold <laughs> not in a bad way like I do want to do this and it is still generally something that this is all me but it's just like an out-of-body experience like am I really doing this is it <laughs> Alexis doesn't know anything about the man she's going to meet except that he's an agency regular this guy has literally went on a website looked at my pictures and picked me out of another selection of girls which proves that he's interested in me, so that's a plus. But it's just, I hope I don't disappoint him as to what he's expecting from me. Because you know you look at a picture of somebody and you have an idea of who they are, like how they're gonna be. I hope he sees, he, doesn't, he hasn't looked at my pictures and created an idea of what I should be and then the real me disappoints. <laughs> Come on, Stitchy. Come on, boy. Agency manager Lawrence is waiting to hear how she gets on. First booking is really important. It's a critical incident, obviously, in, 
anyone's kind of life experience as, as an escort. You never know how it's going to go. You can vet the client, you can brief the young lady, you can make sure that she has access to the other girls in the team, but the dynamics of what actually happens is an unknown. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see, see how she is when she comes out of it. This is where I get off. It's happening, it's happening, it's happening. Okay, okay. Some escorts can make big money. High class escort Cassandra is on a two day booking for which she earned 6,000 pounds. But while her client is at work, she's got some free time. Hi, welcome to Coco. Can I take Hello. Your name, please? Uh, Cassandra. Okay. I have an appointment for my nails. Okay, with myself. Yeah. When I started uh, my career, <laughs> I, w I was uh, in a difficult situation. I, I was in need of money, and uh, the only way uh, to earn money fast was this. But money isn't the only motivation for Cassandra. When she was just 19, her boyfriend died. It was a long-term relationship uh, that lasted for many years. Unfortunately, this uh, gentleman died. And uh, after I decided that maybe if I... Um, if I won't be able to love uh, one person like this anymore, then I can give uh, everything that I have to many people. Have you ever had feelings for anybody? Have you ever like, caught feelings for somebody? And then if that happens, what do you do? Do you have to break away? or I'm trying to keep it in friendship uh, kind of levels. levels. Yeah. Mm. Not to cross the line. What is it you don't like about your profession? Uh, it can be difficult, yeah, emotionally. You know, it's like an emotional roller coaster oh. to managing all this relationship. Most of Cassandra's clients have been with her since she started five years ago. Half of these regulars are married. They see me just because they somehow finished this um, physical relationship with their wives. I think it's quite fair if he's going and seeing an escort. It's not like cheating and going and finding someone else to be absolutely emotionally involved. Because uh, really, in the end of the day, um, they paying me money for seeing them. And uh, they understand that this is the deal. So I think it's kind of saves the marriage. What would you, what would you advise like the women that are in a relationship and commitment with these men? From uh, my perspective, I think that uh, women should pay uh, more attention to their men, trying to find out what uh, they like. inside the person... What their yeah. desires are. Yeah, what, uh, what they want, and mm. um, surprise them occasionally. Despite her experiences with married men, this hasn't deterred Cassandra from getting hitched in the future. One day, of course, I would like to have family and kids, uh, but at this stage of my life, I'm just achieving my goals, I'm developing myself, and uh, I think that everything comes in the right time. So, yeah, if it will happen, it will happen. I'm happy anyway. I'll see you soon. Take care. Take Thank care. You, Thank you. Bye-bye. After 10 years as an escort, Kat is thinking about her future. I think I'm only going to do it for like another year or so. I'm like 32 now and I want to move on and there's like nowhere to go. Hello? If you Google my name or something, I'd always going to come back as being an escort. But leaving a job she's been doing since she was 18 isn't easy, especially when business is booming. This is like how many texts and stuff I normally get a day. It just never, ever stops. Kat's popularity stems from her background in the porn industry. 
She made over 40 films and was offered her first job as a teenager. I accepted the job when I was 18. Basically, I think it was because I got bullied in school and the job made me feel like special. Kat receives around 60 messages a day, but has very little contact with friends or family. And I've got no friends. I just speak to my clients, really. I feel like I've lost my family from doing escort work. My sister sends me pictures of the kids. And basically, that's it. I would love, love a boyfriend, but it's so hard to do this job and I've got that. I, I think that's because I find it so hard to trust people because obviously everybody else sees that as married. I'm scared in case somebody cheats on me. Hi, are you available at 3.30 for an hour? If so, I've got a call. Should I hear what he's going to say? Hi. Oh, hi, I was trying to see if you're available. Yeah, what time? Um, I was going about 3.30, if that was okay. Yeah, that's fine. Bye. Bye. My favourite service to offer is girlfriend experience because it's cuddles and kisses and that. But Kat's background in porn means that the clients mainly request the porn star experience, a more extreme sexual service. Another message. I've got a text. Let's see what he says. Right, this guy's put you up with a bit of light slapping and a bit of roughness. So he went. He was a rough. <laughs> I definitely think that it is a way for men to hit women. Book an escort, book a porn star. They're not going to get it from the wife if they want to take, if they want to hit a woman, find out what it's like to hit a woman, get a woman that's going to take it and get paid for it. That's what they think, I think. When I get my hair pulled and getting bruises and getting spat at, this might sound really crazy, but like when I'm in my job, I just think, do you know what, I've only got an hour of, it, of this. And that's degrading myself really because I'm getting hit and stuff. And then I'm just thinking, oh yeah, it's not gonna last much longer. It's not a card to be treated like that, but at the end of the day, they they want the porn star experience. They've seen my movies. They don't realize in movies that it's a bit of fake where some clients take it a bit too far. Alexis has just had her first booking as an escort, and agency manager Lawrence is waiting for her to return. He has no idea how it's gone. It's not easy being an escort because you have to be all things to all people. And if you're doing that and you're doing it successfully, then it takes something from you. It's going to make you come face to face with your own issues. And some people can cope with it and some people can't. Ah. Here she is. Oh, hi, sweetheart. I don't want to kiss you because I've got a cold. Oh, okay. I'll, give you a look. I'll give you a hug if that's all right. Nice Hello. to see you. Gosh, you look great. Thank you. Gosh, um, look at all that money. Yeah. So you've got 100 there? Yeah. We've got 50. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's great. Thank you very much. Did you count it, by the way, when you first saw yeah. the client? It was, was that, did you find that embarrassing? No, it was like he was prepared for it anyway. Like I was like, I did that line you said about, let's, let's, just, get, let's just get the business out the way before we start. And he yeah. was like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Um, tell me who he was. I can't describe it. He's just, he was really nice. Was like, he? he just Good kept... looking? No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the one bad thing. He was quite like... Chubby. Yeah. Yeah. And not the best looking in the world. <laughs> yeah, OK. What words would you use about how you felt? For example, did you feel empowered? Did you feel enthusiastic? Did you feel cheap? Did you feel sleazy? It's not cheap or sleazy as I thought it would be, given the fact that he was quite older than me yes, yes. and I'm younger than him. Yeah. And, yeah, that I, I thought there may have been a chance that I felt a bit like, oh, I'm just a fun ride for an older guy. Yes, yes, yes. And But... No, it was not like that at all. I can't just... I felt like I was on an expensive date, if that yeah, makes yeah, yeah, sense. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. I felt like I was 
this guy's like wife almost. Like, what, what? His wife almost, like the way he was speaking to me. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Treated, it, there was an intimacy yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. So, in terms of how we proceed from here, are you good to go? Do you want to pause for breath? Do you want to, you know, go away and think about what's happened, or do you want to proceed? Well. I'm available all day tomorrow, so... <laughs> you can, yeah, do you want bookings tomorrow? Yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. Yeah, we can do that. Take care, darling. Look after yourself. Don't come to me. Yeah. God bless. When I first walked into the room, there was a bit of awkward tension, because like, I, I didn't know what to say, so I shook his hand. Literally, as soon as I took the money, he started like taking off his like shoes and put his socks on the radiator and like took off his jacket and was like unbuckling his belt. And I was like, oh, okay, it's gonna be this quick because I was assuming like it was gonna be like talking and then straight to the set. I don't care how bad this sounds, but like when I was sleeping with him and like him on top of me and the things he was saying in my ear, it just it felt good. And then like feeling the money afterwards. Like, at the end of the day, most girls are in this for the money, and, like, when I actually had the money in my hand, and I see it and I was counting it out, it just felt good, and it was like, wow, it, I, all I had to do was just spend some an hour with a guy, let him sleep with me for a bit, and then just talk the rest of the time, and I have five 20 pound notes in my hand. That's easy work. <laughs> I felt weird that he's older than my dad, but I feel great that I've had sex. For a very, this is gonna sound bad, but this is the first time in a long time I've had sex and I walked away from it, not feeling like I've given a man something. I've not let a man take something from me that I wasn't willing to give him. The first booking has been a success, but it's still early days for Alexis. It takes a while to get to know how somebody is gonna get on. And I think she needs to do a few more bookings. She needs to be with us for a month or two, and then we'll know. I need to see more clients and I need to get more experience and see what this industry really is before I go sign my name on a contract and just go, yeah, this is full-time. Because, to be honest, escorting could potentially be a full-time job for me. has come to London to have a sexual health test. Although she uses protection with her clients, there's always a risk of sexually transmitted diseases, so she needs to be sure she's safe. Hi. Hiya, how are you Hiya. doing? Yeah, okay, how are you? Good? Come and take a seat here. Dr Lawrence Gurlis specialises in treating sex workers, including escorts, and has known Kat for 10 years. You've been doing a, a bit of escort work. I yeah, think, I do mainly my escort work. With condoms? Yeah, with condoms. condoms. Mainly with condoms? Oh, with condoms, yeah. OK, which is good. Do you have any symptoms of anything? No. no? Have you had any dodgy clients that you... Not had any about? dodgy clients. It's just getting it really just checked up all again and stuff okay. like that. I think I'll do the fingertip test for HIV because that's... we get a result straight away on that. So I'm going to take a fingertip a blood sample from you. We've seen new and more virulent infections, which is worrying. And we've recently, in London, had an outbreak of uh, syphilis among people working in the adult industry. So I think the thing that's changed is that infections are more common and they're more difficult to treat because of things like antibiotic resistance. Um, and my observation is there's an increasing number of people who are drawn to the adult industry as a way of making a living. What we've got is one dot at the top there, which means this is a valid HIV test. But what there isn't there is a second dot underneath. And the second dot underneath would be positive, but yours isn't. So that's a negative HIV test. So that's really good news. Okay. Dr. Gurlis has seen firsthand how hard it is for escorts like Kat to leave the business. How long do you want to go on doing this sort of work? So I don't want to be like working when I'm about 60, so it's <laughs> time to settle down. But the thing is, because it's, it's hard for me to get a new job because it's, when people see that you've been an escort and a porn star, it's hard to go back into a certain job because it's like when you've come out with 
JLNR. We certainly do see escorts in their 40s and 50s because uh, that's the only job they can get to do and that, that's, that's sad. That's why I think it would be better for Kat to get out sooner rather than later and, and I hope she does. I never can tell what, when I'm going to come out of it. One day I might just get up and just think I'm not doing no more of it. Kat's been given a clean bill of health. She's still unsure about her future, but for now, it's back to work. Escorts often go on tour to different cities to increase their client base and their rates. I'm here for like, normally, well, normally about three or four days and I'm moving somewhere up to Milton Keynes. I'm hoping that you normally come away with like quite a few thousand pounds. The money's really good, but the loneliness is dead sad. I'm basically in a hotel room by myself until a client comes knocking at my door. I just really want a nine to five job. I just want to go work at a bar or a cafe, do normal things, take dogs for work and stuff. I want to make my family proud of me again. I think if you saw me in a few years' time, um, I'd actually be married with a baby in my hand. With a son or daughter. Saying, kid, don't go up like your mother. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a long night, I think. I think it's gonna be one of them it's because it started already. A word of warning to anyone who is looking into becoming an escort, although it brings so many options and so much power to your life, it can also destroy your life just like that. If you're not mentally stable and you're not in a good place, this is not a job for you. Good. It's been four weeks since Alexis became an escort. I never thought I'd see the day that I wore a nipple tassel. Just switch out the way. Today, she's having her first set of professional photos taken for the agency website. Good. I actually am enjoying my first month of escorting. Like, it's completely different to what I was expecting. I haven't at any point felt like, whoa, this is not okay, I need to stop. Yep, good. Okay, point the toes. Yep. There has been one booking where the guy was a complete douche and I told Lawrence and then it was dealt with like the, the agency said I'd never ever have to work with him again and there was one booking where he was 72 and I genuinely didn't think I could ever do that one again. He was a nice guy but like when he was taking off his clothes and he was standing naked he was like, oh, do I look good? Do I look sexy? And all I could think was, you look so shriveled and old. <laughs> and that was the one to like, I was, sat, I was sat on the bed being like, yeah, you look amazing, you look so good. And then like a little voice in my head said, what exactly are you doing right now? <laughs> one of the reasons Alexis started escorting was because of her experiences with online dating. The problem with my generation is we just don't know how to date. And the reason why we don't know how to date is because we're so me, 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 because on Instagram and social media, it's all about you. So we don't, we don't know how to care about other people's feelings. We don't really care about the impact our behavior has towards other people's emotional well-being. And when I'm escorting and I'm meeting these people face to face, not through a phone screen, I'm getting to know them, I'm getting to understand them. And even though I'm not attracted to most of my clients, I still care about them. These last weeks have been amazing. Been me sleeping with people and walking out of the room knowing that they haven't hurt, lied to me or misled me. And they've made me feel like a new woman. 